and if there's any kind of spark, it's going to be right at the tip and then they snap together. So you get a very good connection and a very good power transfer that way. Um, and here, here's a picture of, uh, of one that you can actually see where, uh, you know, the, it, it uh, comes together and, and, you know, the tab. And so you end up with a, a very good connection. Now, what I'd like to do, though, is, is, is uh, pass these around. These had to be fuses. But um, what, what I really want you to notice about these is that t t take, take the end of it and <coughs> just kind of go, uh, you know, move it around a little bit. And you notice that, you know, I, 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 you know the, the, I, I mentioned some of my early failures. What I did was that, oh, yeah, this is great. And then I'm going to put heat shrink on the back of it. Well, what the heat shrink does, it keeps the, the contacts inside there from floating. And what you really want is you want these contacts to be where they float and they meet each other in a natural manner. So the main thing you want to do when you put these together is you don't want to restrict the ability of these to move around. That was my first big mistake. The second thing was that what well, was uh, actually with the, the smaller diameter wires, if you're trying to do something with, you know, a 26 gauge wire, um, you, you really can't just crimp them in, you know, put some kind of stuffing in the, uh, you know, to make the crimp go okay and then not support it somehow. Uh, y you know, I, I, uh, with, uh, I, I do a lot, a lot with TNCs and, and uh, what I found was that, you know, for me to make up a, a, a 12 volt connector, this is the hard part for me to wire up, trying to get these soldered in and screwed together and everything else. So I found a bunch of these for like, you know, like two bucks uh, through a, some kind of supply store. And then I just, you know, made a, made a bunch of them up. And, and uh, I did put a little bit of uh, coax, uh, I'm not, excuse me, a, a little bit of a heat shrink at the back. And, uh, but, uh, you know, these, these work out very, very well. So if anybody wants to look at those later, leave them out here. Um, how many people have used Anderson Power Poles? Oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. What kind of luck have you had with them? Oh, I love them. My whole shack is, is designed for that. Yeah. <coughs> but, but, excuse okay. me. One, one second. By the way, the military has been using the higher current versions of these mm -hmm. for years and years and years, way before they came out with the little, with the little ones for amateur radio mm -hmm. or general electronics. Yeah. Uh, company I work for uh, used these in standby power supplies uh, for cable television and one of the biggest problems that we had was New York City which has terrible amount of pollution and, and, and acid rain and all that kind of stuff. We had where the connectors went together they actually corroded <coughs> and failed mm -hmm. and so the only thing we did to solve that problem was to put Nolox when they were manufactured in the, in the plant. We just put a little bit of dab of Nolox on, on uh, those connectors and we supplied the one that plugs into it and the one that's in the ch chassis. So therefore, they were both protected when they went out of the factory. So once once that was done, we our failure rate went drastically down. Oh, but, but if you have to have these things survive, uh, in the open in New York City. It's, yeah. it's that was my question. Okay, that was out in the open. These were not intended to be used out in the open? No, they're not, not waterproof as such, no. I mean, you can't use them in the open. No electricity. But, but, but what kind of have you had? Our uh, station at the university, all of our uh, research stuff at the university is powered by Anderson. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stuff at our north campus is also powered by Anderson. We also uh, power our emergency field communications gear and our radio astronomy gear <coughs> is powered by Anderson. Our telescope power systems and ancillary equipment is powered with Anderson. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how many years? I mean, years and years and years? Or uh, I'd say past ten. Yeah. Okay. Ten years we started dinking with it and then now it's fully operational with it because like you said, it's interchangeable. We had a we had a camera go down, 
and we were critical time. We're talking within one minute that we had to capture a piece of data. And we brought up the other power supply, disconnected, popped in, and we were operational. In less than just 10 seconds, it was done. Just curious, do you uh, are, uh, solder crimp or both? We solder. Okay. We solder. Okay. And uh, I'd like some comments about your experience with that when, when we get into, okay. into the solder versus crimp. So. Anybody else? How are these held together, the, the red and the black? Oh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll show you in just a, just a minute. It's actually tabs on the sides yeah, of the plastic. Yeah, tabs on the side. Yeah, yeah. Paper, oh, paper tabs. Yeah, here, here's, just, uh, here's, here's the... There is, um, the other thing it does is, what, particularly when you're trying to hook up equipment in less than ideal conditions or you're in a hurry or something, you don't plug it in backwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. That's right.